SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. Today, you accept and have lasers, various kinds, various power levels, and there's uh, sophisticated delivery systems and sophisticated microprocessor controls, and I'm sure to an extent this is taken for granted, and at one time there was some question about whether a laser could indeed be, be made. But this was something new. It hadn't been done before. And I have to add that in addition to all of the rumblings and stirrings about let's make a laser, let's make coherent radiation in the infrared or optical part of the spectrum, there were some scientists who were coming up with ideas and arguments on why this was either fundamentally impossible, respected scientists, so it was not to be ignored, or practically impossible. <coughs> the momentum built up and the, the, the race, the excitement, uh, I guess there was another ingredient that I have, uh, or had, or well, I guess I still do, <laughs> And that is uh, a pretty competitive nature. And, and this really sounded like an exciting game to, to be in. And, and it, it, it really got pretty exciting. I was working at Hughes uh, Research Labs at the time. And Hughes decided that um, Ruby isn't supposed to work. So let's disband that and go work on something else. I didn't really think that the Ruby would work as a laser at first that my purpose was to use it as a model to study and to develop some concepts. But I was a little bit farther along, and I got to the point where I thought that, yes, tough, but I thought I could make it go. So I was pretty stubborn about hanging in there. There was so much pressure on developing something that would work, and I was working on something which, uh, you know, the company I worked for, my bosses, and, and the outside community said was not feasible. If I pushed it at all, I was only going to do it if it was going to work. And the calculations showed that it was marginal. It would just barely do it. Or maybe it's fundamentally, you can't make a laser. Again, you know, you take it for granted, you can make a laser. But it was not, believe me, that clear. The power of that competitive race we were getting rumors every day that somebody else either really had a laser and just hadn't announced it yet or was about to have one. So Hughes went crazy. We've got to have a news release. And I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't have a news release. I want to publish the paper. And I submitted it for publication. And uh, uh, you know, I didn't want to blow it. So uh, no, we've got to have this uh, news release. Well, it blew it. The uh, uh, physical review bounced the paper. We never publish something second if it comes out in the lay press first. Uh, the prestige of the physical review is, is not going to be tarnished by anything like that. The news release hit, pandemonium broke out. Just all hell broke out. For one thing, a number of scientists weren't sure that this was for real. And so there was some controversy. And one of, one of the, the trade publications, uh, I think it was Electronic Design, had a headline. They had to cover themselves. They didn't want to not cover it. And uh, they weren't sure. So they had a headline that said, if he has what he thinks he has, he has a laser. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was the headline. This is really it. This is the, this is the laser. And, uh, Here's the, the polished cylinder and the flash lamp and the ruby. 